Hey you guys, did you hear the story about Jesus in India? Well, we're going to talk all about it on this episode of Talk Gnosis. Hi everybody, welcome to Talk Gnosis. I'm Father Tony and joining me is my co-host Jonathan Stewart. Hello Jonathan. Hello, everybody. Hello, Chelmsford. <laughs> Hello, Chelmsford. And uh, we are joined today to discuss a very interesting topic um, by Bradley Rice, who is a PhD candidate from uh, McGill University, where uh, Jonathan um, does something with the religious department somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> hello, Brad. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. We're, we're pretty excited because this is a, an interesting topic. We're going to talk about uh, the idea that uh, Jesus uh, traveled to India in kind of his lost 30 years. Um, and, and even more than that, we're going to talk about, uh, I think, ap about Apocrypha in general and, uh, you know, how that relates to the, the wider Christian tradition and, and why it even exists. So, um, so let's, let's get right into it. Uh, you, um, you've done some research recently about a, uh, a specific... Um, a specific document uh, called the Life of Saint Issa. Am I saying that right, Issa? Yeah, it's exactly the Life of Saint Issa. Exactly. Yeah. Can you tell us what that is and where it comes from? Yeah. Basically, it's a text that Nicholas Notovich uh, claimed to have discovered uh, in, in uh, Ladakh and Hemis back in 1897, and uh, it basically details how Issa or Jesus uh, left with a caravan for India at the age of 13. Uh, he said to have spent, you know, a good six years in India studying the Vedas and learning Sanskrit, and another six years, uh, you know, at the birthplace of the Buddha, learning Pali and the Buddhist scriptures. And afterwards, he makes his way back through Persia, uh, and he proclaims his, you know, now Buddhist message to Zoroastrians, uh, and finally makes it back to Palestine, where he preaches for another three years, according to this tale. It's very interesting, and uh, it, it's kind of a document that um, that he told people that he discovered, uh, you know, in, in the, the uh, monasteries of India. That's and, exactly right. Yeah. Um, what, what story does he tell about that? Well, basically, he says that he was traveling in Kashmir and Ladakh in 1887, uh, said he had heard tales from Tibetan lamas of a certain Isa, who you know, we know was um, He therefore went to this Tibetan Buddhist, mo Buddhist monastery of Hemis in Ladakh. So as the story goes, Natovich was at first unable to gain entry to the monastery, but <laughs> then he s said to have fallen from his horse and broken his leg, and the lamas nursed him back to health. And while that was going on, uh, the, the chief lama there uh, produced two large volumes written in Tibetan. Um, you know, he, he read these, and there was supposed to be an interpreter there. And uh, basically what we find in The Unknown Life of Jesus Christ is this account read to him by the chief lama of the monastery. And it turns out that he made it all up, right? That's exactly right. In fact, he not only made up the text itself, but he actually made up the tale of the discovery as well. Uh, we know that he was, in fact, in Ladakh by, by another account, but it was not because of a broken leg. It was because of a toothache, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, those can be fairly uncomfortable, you know. You well, yeah. <laughs> Got to right. get that looked at. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bradley, uh, Brad, I, I have two questions. Uh, sure. One, do, do do any mainstream uh, uh, scholars think that uh, we've already established that this, that this text is a forgery? So, so outside of this text, do 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 any mainstream scholars believe that Jesus traveled to India? That's my first question. And well, then my simple. second question yep. is uh, is uh, why did Datovich uh, write this document? Yeah. So, I mean, to answer the first question quite simply, the answer is no. Uh, you know, scholars and historians are virtually unanimous that Jesus did not travel to India. Uh, and historically speaking, there's just simply no evidence to suggest that he did. Uh, you know, we also can't prove that he didn't, but historically it's highly unlikely. Um, you know, as an answer to the second question, I think he had several different motives in writing it. Um, first of all, I think, you know, he was trying to remove Jewish responsibility for Jesus' death. Uh, it's something we don't usually think about when we think about the life of St. Issa. But in the final chapters of this text, when Jesus is back in Palestine preaching, Pontius Pilate is immediately alarmed and he sends out spies to keep tabs on Jesus as he preaches. You know, Pilate is the one who finally has Jesus arrested and crucified, uh, while it's the Jews, in fact, who proclaim his innocence, quite the opposite of what we find in the New Testament. Um, you know, you ask, you know, why would Natovich do this? Well, it's funny, you know, in his writings he professes to belong to the Russian Orthodox Church. 
Um, but he was actually born a Jew, and his father was a rabbi. Um, the few sources we do have in the Tovich indicate that he converted to Russian Orthodoxy pretty early in life, um, undoubtedly because of the deteriorating situation for Jews in the late 19th century. Um, you know, Alexander III had sought this policy of Russification, in which he tried to unite the empire with a single nationality, language, and religion. Uh, and that religion was Christianity. So this did not go well for the Jews, as you might expect, and anti-Semitism was rampant. There were several pogroms. So, you know, given the role that Jewish responsibility for Jesus' death has had in the darker chapters of Jewish-Christian relations, you know, it's not hard to see why he'd want to change the story. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, so he definitely made up the story, but he, he thinks that he has a pretty good reason for doing so. I think so, and that's one of his motives. I mean, another motive that I, that I think is present, that I've not yet quite had a chance to explore in my own research, is the question of a universal religion. So, you know, Tovich was very much a Russian nationalist, and, you know, to some extent, I think he shared in, you know, the ideology of Alexander III and having a single nation, you know, perhaps language and religion. But whereas Alexander saw that religion as Christianity, I think Natovich wanted something a little bit more universal. Uh, you know, and I think probably theosophy played some, you know, played a role here. Uh, you know, integrating, you know, science and religion, integrating the teachings of East and West, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think we'll get into uh, more about theosophy in the in the podcast section because I, I okay. want to dig into that as well. Uh, that's very interesting to me. Um, so the this idea that Jesus went to India this does not originate with uh, uh, Natovich, right? Yeah, that's exactly correct. In fact, uh, you know there was something kind of there was something in the air in the 19th century. Um, you know, within the context of colonialism and Orientalism. You know, this is a time when Hindu and Buddhist texts from the East were being rediscovered by Europeans uh, and translated into English for the first time. And so people were struck by the connections between Buddhism and Christianity. So here were these texts that were thought to predate the New Testament and yet contain many of the same teachings as Jesus. So, you know, did one religion influence the other? You know, how could Jesus have known these teachings? Well, you know, some scholars thought surely Jesus went to India. That was their conclusion. I think that we've come to understand in more recent scholarship that um, that the area uh, uh, where Jesus was living and teaching was uh, quite a bit more metropolitan than um, maybe was first believed. Uh, you know, it, it certainly had a lot of um, uh, of uh, trade happening in that region, and uh, it doesn't seem to me to be at all outside the realm of possibility that. Um, Buddhists and, and Hindus and other uh, religious traditions probably did come in contact with the people of that region. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's certainly possible. In fact, uh, you know, one of the scholars of the 19th century who comes to my mind is uh, Francois Lawanon, who was a Catholic missionary. Um, you know, he imagined that India was the fount of all wisdom, you know, coming you know, from Egypt, from Greece, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, and he had kind of imagined Jesus basically sitting alongside a caravan road, perhaps seen along the Silk Road. Uh, you know, and basically, you know, absorbing these teachings from those who came through. Uh, you know, certainly it's not the kind of thing you can disprove, but I, I personally find it unlikely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you think that there's there's sort of a sense, um, uh, there's there's a long history due to the Protestant influence of, of anti-Catholicism in the West, and then lately we've had a uh, sort of a, a secular backlash against Christianity. So I have the theory that sometimes we want to locate this kind of awesome mystical mm -hmm. interesting stuff that's found in uh the sort of uh christian jewish and muslim traditions outside of that tradition do you mm -hmm. uh the uh basically i'm asking brad do you agree with me or do you think that there's any 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 uh uh, uh what do you think of that theory <laughs> I, have to give, I have to give that one a little bit of thought <laughs> okay do yeah. you rephrase the question one more time I will. We always want to locate stuff that's found in the Christian tradition outside of the Christian tradition. It comes mm -hmm. from somewhere else. It comes from uh, from um, from Hellenism, right? Mm -hmm. Or it comes from the East, uh, and and that has more to do with a a backlash against Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, and before that, a backlash against Catholicism. So whenever we find something interesting in these traditions. We want uh, something, you know, uh, kind of mystical, something magical, uh, something that we connect with, because mm -hmm. we have these these biases or secular biases or uh, um, anti-Christian biases. Uh, we want to find that interesting thing that we like somewhere else. 
So it came from Buddhism or it came from ancient Egypt or it came from, you know, wherever. No, I think that makes sense. And I, I think that definitely explains why this legend holds such appeal for so many people today. Uh, I mean, a lot of the sort of so-called, you know, I, you know, I hate the term, but new age spiritualities. Uh, you know, here I am thinking of the Theosophical Society, Self-Realization Fellowship, you know, Aquarian Christine Church, and you know, Association for Research and Enlightenment. And I think for a lot of these people who, you know, have come to embrace different Eastern spiritualities, um, it's kind of a way of you know, maintaining something of the Christian heritage while still doing something different, if that makes sense. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because this idea is still, you know, 100 years later, mad popular. If, if you hop on, If you hop, hop on the Googles and Google Jesus in India, you're going to find uh, a lot of organizations like the ones that you said proclaiming it, and you're going to find a, a lot of theories, a lot of ideas, a lot of teachings about about that. And and I've heard it in my own life. You know, I've heard I've heard people say that to me. Oh, you know, I heard about you know those lost years. Jesus is India. That's where he got everything, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah, it's funny actually. When I uh, when I was an undergraduate, I mean, now we're talking about 20 years ago. I came across uh, a book by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. You know, in the lost years of Jesus, and I, uh, I remember bringing this to my advisor at the time and saying, you know, what do you think about that? And he basically just had no comment, and he, he kind of didn't know what to make of it. It's, it's a funny theory, uh, but yeah, it's out there, it's in the culture, and uh, you know, people come to me all the time saying, can you think of it? I say, no, I don't think so, but it's an interesting story. Uh, you know, why, why did Christians like to imagine Jesus in India? And uh, that's part of what I'm trying to focus on in my research. Yes. Yeah, it is kind of a blank slate, right? You have uh, 30 years unaccounted for that, uh, you know, you, into which you could paint just about any kind of That's interesting right. story. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I think that uh, this would be a good time to break and uh, to head over to the podcast because I think there's some interesting stuff that we can dig into in, in more depth here. So uh, just for our viewers, um, is there anywhere that you'd like to send people if they want to find you on the Internet or, uh, or look, look up your work or anything like that? Yeah, they can find me on the uh, Academia website. And if you just Google Bradley Rice McGill, I'll come up on there. All right. That's a great website. I find yeah. a lot of really good stuff there. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, for everybody who is watching this video, I'd, uh, I'd love to ask you guys a question. So would your opinion change of, uh, of Jesus, of Christianity, if you found out that he did learn uh, interesting teachings from uh, the wisdom of the East, as it were? How, how would you feel about that? Please let us know your opinion in the comments below. Uh, so uh, wrapping things up here, um, coming up next time on uh, Talk Gnosis, we have a really interesting conversation with uh, Deacon Michael Stroyan of the Apostolic Joe and I Church about uh, early Christian magic, which is a conversation that I'm looking forward to and I think will be very interesting. So stay tuned for that in a couple of weeks. And uh, for, uh, for all of us here at Talk Gnosis, we will see you next week. Good night. Thank you.